The federal government has disclaimed the report alleging it asked Nigerians in the United Kingdom who have indicated interest to return to the country to pay 160,000 naira for coronavirus COVID-19 test. The government had earlier confirmed that the prospective returnees would bear the cost of the trip and will be quarantined on arrival in Nigeria. However, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, the NITCOM, in a statement on Monday by spokesman Abdul Rahman Balongu, said it did not ask Nigerians in the UK to pay the coronavirus test. And joining us live via telephone is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Diaspora, Abike Dabiri Erewa. Thank you, Mrs. Abike, for joining us. Thank you, and good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, and how are you doing? Well, I'm trying to stay safe and observing my lockdown. That's good to know. Now, let's start with the controversy that Nigerian returnees were being asked to pay for their COVID-19 test as a condition of being allowed back into the country. Where did this come from? It came from Sahara reporters. So, and, and, so and we have replied to Sahara reporters that that was a fake information to the unsuspecting public. Now, here's the scenario. UK is a high-risk country. So if you're coming back, you want to come back from the UK, to, in fact, every part, every part of the world, Nigerians who have indicated interest to return back to their country, and these are Nigerians who basically are not living in the diaspora, but were stranded for one reason or the other, you know. Yeah. Um, courses, programs, medical, business, tourism, and all that. Okay, earlier so on, over yeah. 2,000 applications have been received. And there are conditions by NCDC. Okay. One is, it's advisable that for those of you in Irish countries like the UK, USJ, China, you must do your test. In China, you can do it free. In Dubai, you can do it free. In the USA, it's virtually impossible. In the UK, you can do it with NHS, but they're also private laboratories. So private laboratories are not free. They cost between 250 to 350 pounds. So it's left to the individual where you want to do your test. So they have options. So nobody's asking anybody to pay, but what the government is saying is that it's advisable that you do your test before you come back. As I also read in some reports, some have done the test and some have actually been positive. So those that have been positive actually have been advised to go and self-quarantine themselves. They were asymptomatic. And they've also been advised to ensure that everybody they met also went to self-quarantine. So in as much as we want to bring in Nigeria stranded, we also have to remember the 200 million Nigerians they're going to bring here. So it's important to take necessary precautions. So, like I said, that was Sarah reporter report. We wrote them and say your report is false, and I hope that um, everybody understands that that report was a false report. Okay. Now, what sort of challenges have been faced with regards to repatriating Nigerians at this time? Is it down to money to send aeroplanes for them, or, or what could it be? Well, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Consulting with the presidential task force on COVID-19, we take the final decision. But so far, names have been compiled. And we have names from Nigerians from about 75 countries who want to come back home. But like I said, it's important that when you do come back, you must go on compulsory isolation. It's not going to be optional. It's not going to be, oh, you want to go back to your home. When you come back, apart from testing over there, NCDC will test you here, and you go on quarantine. If your second test here, you are negative. Entities can decide when to let you go. So the next step will be announced by the Minister of Foreign Affairs next week. Airlines are being looked into, and um, other steps will be announced by the Minister. But we need to take all the necessary precautions to ensure that while we bring those who are standing back home, we do not jeopardize the um, health of so many others that are home. Now, why is it important that now, more than ever, we be seen to be looking after our very own? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Why is it important that now, more than ever, we be seen to be actually looking after our very own? Will the state... We be seen, for us to be seen as taking care, looking after our very own. Why is it more important now than ever? It's always been important. Mm. The responsibility of government is to provide for the welfare of the citizens. What I just look forward to is that at the end of this pandemic, hopefully a lot of things are more in our faces now. The need to 
Number one, you know, be able to take care of the most vulnerable Nigerians. They need to provide efficient health care in our country. And they need to have a database of Nigerians wherever they are, whether they are home or in the diaspora and, and what they're doing. So I'm hoping that at the end of all this, we would have learned a lot of lessons from this pandemic. So just by the negative that many people will be dying, let's hope that there are lessons to learn and that we don't just go back to square one. Now, earlier on in the week, there were reports that made the news about Nigerians in China who were being um, treated with what um, amounted to disrespect over their infection status. Can you tell us what has been done to defend the dignity of our people right there in China? Well, I think first thing was when I saw the video, and uh, I think uh, I was asked on a television station, my first response was, it's not about a video. Let them go to the mission and report. And, you know, we, we can't stop taking everything hook, flag and sinker on, 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 on social media. And they did just that. They went to the mission in Guangzhou, and you saw the head of chancery there, Mr. Lawal, who attended to them, and then took it up with the Chinese authorities. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has summoned the Chinese ambassador, and um, the Chinese ambassador has reiterated the fact that they're not discriminatory discriminating against blacks because they are blacks and against some reason. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, too, has also intervened. But what we, with the Diaspora Commission, will be doing, will be following up with our people in China. Now the situation is calm. Yeah. The, those in the hotels, you know, were, are, giving, are being given better food, and they are saying they must quarantine for 14 days, which we understand. So let's see how things go. We are monitoring the situation in China. As it is today, the situation is uh, reasonable. It's, 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 at least the Nigerians there are not complaining that for the moment. Again, a lot of Nigerians in China have applied with the mission to come back home. So when the Minister of Foreign Affairs arranges a flight with, with Nema and all that, and they're ready for China, they'll bring them back home. So we'll continue to monitor the situation. And if there are any complaints, we're going to let uh, the ministry and the government know that we still have China. So for now, it's okay. So hopefully, it's not just mouth service, lip service. We want to see action. As a Nigeria, if you commit a crime, you'll be punished for it, but do not stigmatize or generalize and say all of you are the same. That is what we're not tolerate. That is what we're not accept. So we, we keep monitoring the situation. All right, just before I let you go this afternoon, now as the chairman and the chief executive officer of the Nigerian diaspora, what is your message to Nigerians out there, Nigerians in diaspora and Nigeria at home concerning the whole pandemic and how do they begin to repose confidence in the government knowing that they're on top of this matter? What would be your message to those people? Well, my message to Nigerians abroad is that obey the laws of wherever you are. Let's all keep safe. safe. This is a pandemic that nobody can really explain. So I join in praying and hoping that the world finds a cure to this pandemic. So for Nigerians in the diaspora, there are lots of Nigerians in the diaspora that are on the front lines. We've lost a few doctors and medical practitioners in the, in the UK in particular and some other countries. So I salute them. I commend them. When some say, oh, why aren't you bringing Nigerian doctors home? The thing is, Nigerian doctors are also working wherever they are. They are working and they are contributing. In fact, all, by tomorrow, we're going to be talking to four of them on the front line. We're going to be having a virtual diaspora series with some of them on the front but some are into even finding a cure for COVID-19 so I commend all of you to listen you for Nigerians at home let's just follow the rules okay today somebody still told me that ah it can never get to me that is a problem as I speak with you I'm told that they have gone into communal levels marketplaces which which government is trying to now contract trade. so let's obey the rules all right. follow instructions I know that this is a war situation it's not a normal situation. Okay. And while government cannot do everything, it's a time to show love, care by every one of us. You, for instance, my brother on television, I expect that you can give a food pass to somebody, to somebody in need. It's not about being rich or anything. It's about showing love, care, attention to any other person that needs it. All right. So let's hope that we learn a lot of lessons from this pandemic and be each other's keepers and do the right things, whether as leaders or followers. Abigail Dabirewa, thank you for your time, and it's been wonderful having you with us on News on the Hour. Thank you. And stay safe out there.